Hello, everybody, and welcome to City Dwarves. How are we all doing today? Ooh. Ooh, we're doing. excited to do the things like build shoes and like Design tame shoes. pets and make friends and rivals. Mm. And, this is like... the best thing that's happened to me all day. Oh, cute. That's very nice. Well, I don't know if that's cute. I don't know, actually. Maybe your day deserves to be better than... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel anymore. I'm like, is that a good or bad thing? I love that we're the best, but, like, maybe your day should be the best completely. Aw. See, Aww. that's why we're all such good friends. Mm -hmm. Well, where last we left our party, um, they were leveling up to third level. So before we hop into today's adventure, why don't we go around the table and talk about all of our new toys, starting with Jen, the greatest toy maker of all. Nice. I'll take that one. Uh, yes, I am picking the shadow path of shadowy shadows uh, <laughs> because I think it's a pretty good fit for Pebble. People forget about her all the time. Uh, she did go into a cover mission where she stole IDs to get into the Cobbler's Guild. Uh, yeah, it feels like decently accurate. So gonna go for Path of the Shadows. Also, I don't know, I think it's just gonna but, be fun. But like, real quick summary of what Path of the Shadows is for those who uh, aren't intimately familiar. That's a like, good what question. It, what does it do for you? I think it gives me a couple of like sneaky spells, uh, if I recall correctly, something like darkness and you know, pass without trace, which I don't even think I've ever cast, so I'm excited for that one. Uh, and there was other ones. There were other ones like silence. I think I think silence a really funny, cool spell too. Um, I think silence is there as, is in there as well. Okay. Uh, and I think that's most, like, it's mostly that. Like, I get a, a couple of cool, sneaky spells. Alrighty. A couple yeah. of cool, sneaky spells. Okay. Excellent. And next person is Lazuli. What are you doing with your new level? I am taking the College of Eloquence for my bard. Uh, which is based on oratory and persuasion, which is funny because originally she was a musician and I guess maybe she is, but I haven't used that at all. So here she is. Mm -hmm. um, so at third level, she has silver tongue, which means that when I make a charisma persuasion or charisma deception check, if I get a nine or lower, I can treat it as a 10, which is awesome. And then I also get Unsettling Words, which is, as a bonus action, I can use one of my Bardic Inspiration and choose a creature I can see within 60 feet of me, roll the die, and the creature must subtract the number rolled from the next saving throw it makes before the start of my next turn. Yeah. So you could do that and then cast a spell against them that would, you know, CC them or something, and um, mm -hmm. then they'd be wrecked. Mm-hmm. Like, mm, is that what you want to do? <laughs> Unsettling words. <laughs> and I also get to take new spells, but I haven't been able to figure out how to add those spells to my character sheet. I will manage that for you if you'd like. Okay. Um, yeah. If you just tell me what you want, I can handle it. I want to add what what I just I just had it. Detect thoughts as my first second level spell. <laughs> I like your reaction to that. Feels like, okay, no, but what next? What, what do you want? Like detect auras? <laughs> and then I guess uh, family, party. I think that I should take Unseen Servant. I feel like that would be helpful to us, but I currently have- Oh, I guys. love Unseen Servant. Yeah, yeah, I feel like we need it. But yeah, I it's a have... great way to break everything Neil's Mm -hmm. oh, and steal us. while we're visiting people. Or, I don't know. I <laughs> We've done a lot of crazy on. stuff with unseen servants. Scrapes with unseen servants. Like yeah. it's in my best stuff. Like anytime I talk about D and D, I talk of unseen servant and all the crap we could do with it. Yes. Like, do you remember that time where, <laughs> like, this is my favorite thing ever? I think where we did the rope trick 
And then the rope trick led us, because there was this cylinder, right? In the middle of the cylinder that was invisible, there was this stone that was really important that we needed to get. And it was the whole quest of the whole dungeon that we just got in. We're not mm -hmm. supposed to get it at that point, as far as I know. And then I'm like, hmm, well, how do we get through this thing? And then clearly we couldn't. I tried magic and whatever, and Scene Servant wouldn't go through it. Then I tried casting a Scene Servant in it, but it would get blocked at the ceiling. And I was like, well, shit, that doesn't work. Because uh, well, we were able to raise the thing, but it would get stuck at the ceiling. And then I was like, okay, so we rope trick into another dimension at exactly the edge of the ceiling and we get into another dimension and i wait at the top for mage hand to rise and bring the stone into the other dimension does that work and then he like pulled up his book the face and another face and it was like you now hold the stone <laughs> and then you know i just casually released a dragon and like basically ended the campaign but whatever it was great it's fine yeah, you know it'll happen fine the question is i currently have disguised self Heroism, which is like a buff that I can give you guys in a battle. Speak with animals. Tasha's hideous laughter, which like incapacitates someone. And cure wounds. Ooh. And we do have now, um, we know that Proton can speak with animals. But speak with animals already has helped us a lot so far. So mm. I was debating heroism, but that's kind of my only real battle spell or disguise self. Mm, I think disguise self. Mm, that <laughs> one's fun too. Yeah. Neil, can I trade disguise self for unseen servant? <gasps> Wait for unseen servant? No, that's what but, I'm saying to to oh, is that, just swap to get out. rid of one. Oh. Yeah. Well, which one that are we removing? To get rid of disguise self. The list I told you is the ones I have. So I need to get rid of one so that I can have unseen servant. Hmm. Oh, hmm. will you remove heroism? I could. I mean, as long as we really don't think we're going to be fighting that much, because basically it gives you guys, <laughs> uh, it gives you temporary hit points. That's nice. Do you have the healing spell? I have cure wounds, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. Yeah. Should we get rid of heroism? I think it's okay. Neil's nodding. Why are you nodding, Neil? Is that a good You're like, nodding. I don't want to do it anymore. How often do shoemakers need to be heroic? Uh, I guess that's up to you. I would say the opportunities are diametrically opposed to our preparedness for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that or this guy's self? Yeah. Mm. Or you can get rid of cure wounds. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel I like... Mean... Mm. It does add it points cure wounds if you see it that way. Yeah. Can you and really, heroism. Can you, can you really promote your brand if you're disguised? <laughs> I'm gonna let's let's flip a coin. Oh my yeah. gosh, we could have a whole fake influencer that's just Anna disguised. Yeah, no, we could. <laughs> like I'm inspired here. <laughs> Anna but with a mustache. Perfect. <laughs> I'm Lazarus. Anna without the beard. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. I think everything's valid. Like, I think heroism's valid. Getting rid of cure wounds, but going with heroism is valid too, because heroism is kind of a hit point in disguise. Follow your heart, Anna. What, what would your character That says get rid of want? heroism. Goodbye, heroism. All right. And not, uh, last but not least, we have Boldara, the barbarian. What are you doing for your level? Well, Neil, this is an exceptionally easy choice. I'm hitting level three and I'm a barbarian. We just got two cats and I may have tangled with a werewolf. We're going with form of the beast. That's going to give me uh, either teefies or clawsies or a widow tail. Uh, and I get to choose <laughs> every time I rage, which one I get. Wow. Yes. And that That's tail amazing. ain't so little. It's got reach of 10 feet. You yeah, can, it's uh... widow. Dang. But the W is adorable. It's not little. Less it's a measure widow. of length. But yes, mm -hmm. ten feet. You said, oh, I'll... ten feet. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to to besmirch your tail. I, I no, that was her. an important uh, awareness for audience. It's still and cute, me. but like, <laughs> I'm just no ending very insistently. <laughs> right. Well, with our party fully leveled up, 
where last we met, you had just made a new pair of shoes for one of the ladies in the garden club. Um, and she's going to go off and do her garden party, which isn't for a little while. And now we find ourselves hanging around the shop, the next pair of shoes out in the world, um, but not going to be seen for a little while. And then the regular orders are sort of coming in, trickling in, you know, the local people who are nearby bringing their things to you. Proton is happily working away. The cats are, are bounding around. We named our cats, right? We definitely named mm -hmm. them. Yes. Yes. They named themselves too. They did. We, we did not. We name said that them. one of them we were gonna call them Boots, but they had yeah, an actual name. Yeah, they had the name. Uh, yeah. Let me find it. Uh, no, that's not yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, OG name of our Blue Links cat is Ranger, but side name Boots, and his friend is Fluke, and is forty pounds, double the Big size cat. of Boots Ranger. And Ranger and Fluke. Mm -mm. Boots and Fluke and Boots and Fluke. Do you guys have any other questions? <laughs> Anna, if I took the video of the Instagram and tweeted it, is that okay? Yeah. Cool, cool. <laughs> it's new level lazy. <laughs> and then I'll retweet you. Gosh, it's perfect. It's, it's the inception I wanted it to be. Boots Ranger and what was the other one? There's not the other one. Uh, Fluke and then Boots, Fluke. aka Ranger. Right. Yeah, that's it. Luke. Okay. Came up Fluke and Boots. Things. Fluke and Boots and Fluke and Boots and. Oh, Fluke is one of the greatest like Rainbow Six casters of all time. She's amazing and she's great at D and D. So I think uh, it is an honor to have a cat named Fluke. Excellent. Aww. Excellent. Uh, all right then, party. You're hanging around on a warm summer day. It might be a little too warm, actually. It might mm. be one of those like hot summer days where you're really hoping that there's a breeze, but there's not. And so you've got like your legs up on the table, but like not your skin, just like the edge of the heel so that you have as much skin contact with the air as possible. And those of you with beards are like, why do I have this beard? This is just like the mm. worst thing in the world. You know that feeling, you know, the feeling mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's terrible. Um, and so you're hanging around the city on this oppressively hot day. What does it look like, Sister Dwarves, when there's no business to tend to at the moment, and it's war, it's too warm? What's life like for you? Well, I'll tell you, it's a lot of just kind of attending to the cats, because both of them are <laughs> splayed out, just like maximum, you know, heat dispersion on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little worried. They appear to be melting. I don't know much about cats. And so uh, I don't know if my sisters believe me and are as alarmed as I am, but I am fanning each of the cats. Uh, very sweaty, very stinky. And I've cropped my beard uh, to like a nice little box shortness. <laughs> the summer, summer beard. Yeah, it'll grow back in like two, three days. I'll have it waist length again. Not two, three days, like two, three weeks, but. That would be a, a very hot task for you to be standing there fanning the cats. Wouldn't that I really. I love them. You must really love them because that'd make you like sweaty and sticky and exhausted. What if someone came by and saw you like that? What if. Yes, who's walking around in the heat of the day like this? Everybody's what, what flattened if... out. What if she came by and saw you like that? No. No. Who, okay. Neil? No. Who, Neil? No one. Okay, never <laughs> She's mind. She's gone That's a from my mind. Question. I have two furry creatures who love me. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Did, so I'm sorry. Cat that lady. was inappropriate to begin with. Um, Flapping my armpits and the cats now. <laughs> what are the rest of you up to on this hot summer day? Complaining. <sighs> and I think I considered like fanning Boldera because she's like double fanning the cats so it was like a single fanning action but then I just realized how exhausting it was I think I did it like 10 minutes and then I just decided to go right behind the cat that gets the AC from Boldera and like I'm pretending to do something useful I don't know I, I'm probably brushing the cat I'm brushing the cat but it's partially an excuse to get some fresh air got it All right and what are you complaining about, Lazlai? 
It's hot. <laughs> okay. It's hot. It's supposed to cool hot. off. I don't know how to it's predict hot. weather. Don't you guys have like? Don't you have a spell that could like do something about this? That's a good question. Do so I have a spell that could do something about this? I feel like overnight I just grew empowered and discovered an ability to do magic casting. Oops. I didn't mean to cast that, I just meant to look at it. Let me see what I can do. Oh, it's time to invent air conditioning. Ooh, I can chill, warm, or flavor up to one cubic foot of non-living material for one hour. Oh, the floor. <laughs> Ooh, one cubic foot of the floor. No, it's got to be something we can spread out. So like, uh, uh like, like, what do we ha have? What's like the most flour efficient? or something that we could like coat ourselves in chilled <laughs> flour. Like, let's see. No, it's important to note that this won't keep it cool forever, right? It says like, for one hour. Yeah, but if you if you were to chill a bath and then put I, I'm, how long I'm trying to say it is not an infinite heat sink you know if you were to cast the spell on the heat sink on your processor the process the, the heat sink would still heat up over time you can definitely cool things with it but it's not going to be like a nice infinite air conditioning right it'll be a temporary measure but that's okay cantrip is a, an action and it's unlimited but it'll mm. be like a continual like cantripping a thing. I, I don't know about this interpretation, Neil. It says I can chill it for an hour. So it seems like it would remain chilled for an hour. So if I had a rock and I was like holding the rock in my hot little hands, I wouldn't heat the chilled rock. It would be chilled for an hour. You think- What would they, why would they think up to an hour? Is an infinite heat sink. Why would it, why would, like, so the point is, right, if I'm like, oh, I want to chill this punch bowl for an hour, right? Mm -hmm. The air is still hot around the punch bowl. It's not like, like, the punch is going to stay chilled for an hour. But, like, right? if there's, um, you know, like a rock in a lava flow and you cast chill on that rock in the lava flow, you could then, like, hop on the rock and be cool. Like, you know, it's not going to melt in the lava. I would like, explode. What, it's science. You know, come on. Well, it's, it's got really it, it, If it's chilled, but let's, what's the definition of chill? I have reduced the temperature of this item. Mm -hmm. And and you're saying the spell will prevent the item from gaining temperature until the hour has passed? Yeah. So if someone casts heat metal on your armor, you could defeat the second level heat metal spell just by casting prestidigitation on it? That's a really good question. Wait, how long could. does heat metal really last? Is it in heat metal? How long does it last? Like, I feel like that's... Concentration, one minute. Heat metal is way more destructive because chill and warm are not the same as freeze and heat. Yeah. True. So I'm saying, like, yeah, I can chill a substance. It's not going to be, like, stay frozen or something, but it's at least going to make me a little bit cooler. Like, I can wad up my dress, and I can chill my dress for an hour, and I can put it back on, and my dress will be a an early dry fit. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's it's athletic wear that's supposed to keep you cool by wicking sweat. Okay, okay. okay. Well, I think no matter how it works out, though, I feel like we have to agree that we're gonna feel better with this plan no matter how it pans out <laughs> that's a really good point honestly none of this minutia matters in that just like i'm gonna d decide my character feels better from chilling <laughs> something or like well, do you share the chill or is it like just yeah i take i take i tell everyone to take off their clothes and i put them i i mash them as much as i can into a a one cubic foot pile mm -hmm. And I cast chill on them. And then the first time them back. you cast this cantrip, sister, I become inspired with the idea of a swamp cooler, <laughs> of which I have pasted several examples in our City Doors Discord chat. <laughs> As a California that. resident and with wildfire season coming, uh, I, I'm sure you could all appreciate 
an opportunity for our uh, uh, viewers to learn. I once got mono from a swamp cooler. Holy shit. How did you... You can't kiss it, Anna. Ow. I know. <laughs> it's a long story. But anyway. <laughs> I didn't know these were real until I put in homemade air cooler. And it was like, you mean swamps? And I was like, sure. I mean, there is an actual swamp cooler like unit. But it's like a an good... air conditioner that you can buy that's not one of these like homemade... It's a good point, though. I'm learning I so feel that... Bulldora. Ha! <laughs> See? Bulldora, I think you're onto something with your dream about the thing called a swamp cooler that doesn't yet exist in this world. <laughs> like, if you could put something cool and then fan it out without having to fan, which you've been doing to the cats for the last hour, our store would be the most popular store ever because it would be the only chill place in town. <laughs> I've. I do think there's some value to being the one air conditioned, relaxing. Ooh. Oh, you call it air conditioned? That is such a cool name. I think we should make everybody learn it. We have conditioned so. the air. We are in control of it. Sister. That's, this is a great idea. This is a great way to get business. Mm -hmm. Okay. How are we going to fashion this swamp cooler? Do I, do we gather large rocks that I chill on an hourly basis? Yes. If they could be shaped like cats, like plus one point. <laughs> like some little ears. How do we make, how do we, is it going to be a Baldara uh, fueled fan of the air over it? Or can we create some sort of like air movement? Hmm. It's a good question. I don't know what would like fan the air. Mm. I'll, I'll keep at it for now. Can I, can I try to build some sort of like pulley system that takes one of the fans and just goes like this? Yes, you can have I help? <laughs> a dwarven craftsman shop with lots of beams that is made for altering wood and leathers. I'm sure you could you know, tack something up over here, put a beam across it there, and then just loop a, a rope around the beam and kind of just mm -hmm. and create a bit of a fan, maybe put a weight on it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have a pulley on hand, it would help with the friction, mm. but yeah, yeah, it could be done. Cool. So that's what I, that's what I do. I create like a pile of chilled stones and then a fan that blows air through them into the shop. Oh, can we put them into a container so that it, like, channels it in one direction and not just, like... Oh, then you can't fan it. Mm. Okay, yeah, never mind. We, we, let's we just keep it... it let, let's do, anyway. let, let's mm. do what you said. Let's do what you said. But we keep the doors of the shop closed. Because mm -hmm. we understand air. Which makes us, I imagine, unique on the street when every other shop would have their doors open trying to get whatever... Uh, maybe nobody's gonna come if the door's closed though. No, no, I no, think they'll notice. Paint, so we, gotta... we gotta paint cool Open. air inside on the door. Do they even know what cool air is though? Yeah, they understand air and they understand cool. <laughs> they understand those hmm. two things. I think we should call it like chilled store. <laughs> Chill store. <laughs> Chill. All right. Sure. Chill air. Chill air. Cool air. air. Right, cool air is. Are we? Too. We're trying to get people in here based on we're now that cool, we have cool air, right? We're cool in here. Join us. Because <laughs> I could just walk next door to the ram's ass and yell to everybody in there. That is way cooler than next door at our store. Mm -hmm. But you could only come in if you intend to purchase at least one pair of shoes. What is that? <laughs> like a two drink minimum? Like a two shoe minimum? Yeah. They're at a bar. They should be familiar with the concept. <laughs> Is there, ooh, didn't we say we were going to start making accessories? Do we have other items that we want people to come see? Oh, is this a product launch we're actually having? I think we're having a launch event. <laughs> oh, whoa. what are we launching? Uh, Pro Tony, make some cookies real oh, quick. Like oh, a ton the, of them. The, 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 oh, the, 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 so the, the, oh, well, I mean, purses. it's pavers. Mm -hmm. We it's launched not... purses. Remember, we were making clutches. Oh yeah, we took all our little scrap leather and we can make it into like little. Yeah, could the new clutches? I mean, oh well, why don't we do an Adonis collection launch? Like we have mm -hmm. one out, but like, oh well, we don't have other others ready. Though. No, we don't have anything to show, and it's hot today, and we have cooler today. 
And I guess it's not the right time for the fur cat recycled fur line either. Mm, it's no. too hot. <laughs> so we we have do we have some purses in stock? Roll me um, a d20 to see how the purse production has gone thus far. Mm -hmm. Like, it's gonna go great, but it might still be in the prototyping phase, or it might be in the, you know, let's let's see where we are. Ten. Um, you've got, you've done most of your prototypes. Protony, sorry, Proton is working on the first, like, Ruined. actual model, um, and it's still in process. Okay, so this is a pre-launch event where you can come see the prototypes and order your custom purse or clutch to be made in the first wave. Think about that. And okay. they'll get a special... Mm, green interior that's only available for the launch collection. <laughs> and maybe we can carve some lasts now and if you commit to a last and pay Ooh. it front yeah it, let's say like what if we have a system where if people don't want to buy shoes yet they can still order a last to be created and like kept on file with our store so mm. like if people don't want to buy shoes today that's fine but they can pay the last fee to have their their last created on site today because mm. sitting in our store while they're having their last oh, done would be really comfortable. That's true. And so we can only take the, so many people. So that's mm -hmm. the fee to stay for a while. It's mm -hmm. to get your last done mm -hmm. and then you stay in the air conditioned store. They can come to browse clutches, but they can only stay for so long. But if you really want to stay and enjoy the fresh air, get a last. Mm -hmm. I like it. All have right. we managed to make it cool inside, Neil? Well, you have cast prestidigitation on a one cubic foot pile of rocks uh, mm -hmm. and your clothes. You technically can have it done up onto three separate groups of things, um, right? Prestidigitation says... If you cast a spell multiple times, you can have up to three of its non-instantaneous effects active at one time. Uh, oh, is it a spell that you're casting three times? Do we need to cast it back to back to back? It's a cantrip, so oh, okay. No, yeah, so I'll just do I'll just do a bigger pile of chilled rocks. The more cool surface area that's blown over, the better. Great. So yeah, we can probably let the clothes go after the first mm -hmm. wave, right? Yeah. So uh, on your little shop here, if this is the customer area and this is the workman's area. Um, where are you putting these rocks? Are they in your area? Um, or are you going to pile them all in the customer area and keep that area real cool? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to move the customers into the workshop while you carve the last? Like, what's the... How does the how does the store oh. operate during the, the crafting, lasting, chilling phase? I want to do a sales pitch for that. I feel like... Originally, I thought it should be front of the store, but now that I think about it, when they come to the front, they should come see the purses. But if they want to purchase a last, then they get to access the back of the store, where we're going to do a nice little setup when they can sit and chill, literally Ooh. chill. What mm. if we set up the fan like here so that it blows through the customer area into the workroom? Mm. But then, doesn't it feel better in the customer area, and we would need to do the last there? Mm. We could do that, right? But it also means that you'd have to have someone like hanging out over here to operate the fan, right? Or I guess you could use a more complicated system of pulleys and have the operator be anywhere. But well, I so when I said the pulley to make the fan, I was saying I want to make like. Well, no, I, I guess we don't have any like power source, do we? No, no, someone's gonna have to manually pull this, but you can use you can make a bigger fan, right? Than just right. like a piece of paper. We could use the rocks to make like a, a split the the shop in half, and then you'd have to come on the other side of the rocks, but they're sort of in the middle, kind of blasting out. I can't draw. How do I draw? Oh, ah. actually, here, Neil. So, oh. Valderwald in my chat made a really good point which is that it says one cubic foot. It doesn't say it has to be in a shape of a cube, right? Totally. So the rug is probably about a cubic foot of matter just like laid out. Okay. 
So I'm since I have two piles of rocks, I still have one prestidigitation that I can cast. So I'm gonna yeah. chill the rug in the customer area. Mm. And the fan can be in the workshop. I like that. Got it. Blowing mm. through the workshop out to the customer area. Yes, they feel Got the little it. breeze and they're like, ooh, that must be nice. I wonder how I could get back there with a last. Mm -hmm. And then they can take off their shoes and stand on the cool rug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay. No idea how to undo that paint. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I got you back. <laughs> so the only question that remains is who is going to leave the now comfortable air conditioned room and go into the bar and try and bring in the hot day drinkers into this shop hmm. uh, with my newfound uh, what is it silken words what's it called silver tongue hmm. I, I'll go do it leave the shop behind heading over just to the town it's right there what what adventures could await you just just going to the next shop over right it's just it's it's not a big deal you turned off the music that's making me nervous i don't like that i added the visual representation of the cold places <laughs> nice good job excellent all right you go two doors over You've got this air-conditioned place behind you. You've got a line of purses that are, are getting ready. You've got this last plan all set up. It's genius. Get into the bar. What's it called again? The uh... Ram's ass. Ram spiral. Ram spiral. <laughs> Thank you. Adult in the room. Um, and open the door and step on in. And the place is packed. There's a lot of people in here and it's hot. Like it's got the heat of a whole bunch of people in here, but everyone seems to be in a really good mood. They're all like a little tipsy and they're all sort of like, you know, swaying back and forth in different groups, you know, singing songs with each other and like clinking drinks. Um, and it seems like it's too hot to be having this much fun and drinking alcohol. And there's too many people in this small building Something seems just a little bit off. Uh, do I see anyone I know? Mm, yes. Yes, you do. Um, there is, what should we call it? Um, one of your, your neighbors who lives across the street from you, it is Mr. and Mrs. Uh, m nope, that's your name. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, nope, that's a, that's a bad name. Visa. Mr. and Mrs. Visa. Visa? Yes. As And, and our next door neighbor is American Express? <laughs> that would be a ridiculous name. No. no. Yeah. The next door neighbors are the capitalists. One and two. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Uh, I go up to Mr. and Mrs. Visa and I ask what what's the deal why is that why is everyone so so chill haha ha, pardon the pun don't you know no Isn't why you're here no that's why i'm asking there's a traveling wizard in town and he makes all the beers cold like <sighs> ice cold oh that's very cool you should get one it's really refreshing on a hot day like this I would, but see, over at the shop, we actually have the entire room chilled, including the customer floor. And we're doing kind of this like special launch event. I tell all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I'm oh. like, yeah, if you know, cold beer is nice, but but if you want to bring a cold beer into a nice chill area, come on over to the store. We can do that. Yeah, sure. We can drink in your store. Yeah. Absolutely. When you say it's cool, how did you cool it? Magic. The same sorcerer? No, I did it. I thought you just dabbled like a little bit. Well, come see how well my dabbling works. They're very curious. Um, they will take their drinks in hand. They do not order another and they will head back to the shop. Do you go with them or do you stay to lure no. more people? I'm trying to spread the word. All right. So you're going to stay. And I, 
I'm also going to talk to this wizard. I'm going to try to get an influencer contract. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to follow uh, Mr. and Mrs. Visa as they head on over to the shop. So the other party members are there. Who's operating the fan? That's still I would uh, say uh, probably still got that pet. Oh, mm -hmm. crap. That means I'm it's... welcoming customers. That's really well, uncomfortable. I was wondering, I, uh, do you feel like we need to be security at the door? We have like a limit on how many people we could have in our shop, right? I'm worried this is going to be exceptionally popular. We have such a great idea. Uh, I don't know who's like, I guess both of us are like, ever since she left, we're like, uh, who's going to be front of store? Who's going to talk to people? Ah, uh, crap. Mm -hmm. Like, we both know we're not really great at it. Like, this is, this is not a good decision. Excellent. Uh, so the two of you are having this conversation as the door <laughs> opens, it chimes with the bell, and you hear the familiar voices of the people who live just across the street from you going, oh my god, this is nice! Don't you think this is nice, sweetie? Oh my god, this is really nice! Um, and they kind of walk in, and they come up to the okay. table over here. They're um, they're human sized, so they use the the upper table, not yeah. the, the lower table. Um, and they they lean over with their big old mugs of ale mm -hmm. on the table and go, "This is so nice. What's going on in here?" Hi, welcome to the store. Uh, Leslie's not there because she was at the bar and she probably sent you here. So so welcome. We have uh, air conditioning, we call it. And we have a special event. And then I look at the notes I took. <laughs> uh, clutches. It's a new collection. You can pre-order today if you want a clutch. It's Mr. Last says, uh, you're selling arrows? Since when did you start no, selling arrows? It's a thing to carry other things. It's like you a mean bag. A quiver. Like a bag, yeah. I, I mean, you could probably... I don't think arrows fit, but it's f smaller things. But also we have this other thing that I'm much more familiar with. We're doing also a last event where if you want to stay in the store for a really long time... You guys are going out of business? No, last, like for your feet. I don't know what that is. What's a last? Oh, it's like when we do shoes for people, we need to take their dimensions. So we create a last, and then we can create as many shoes as we want from your dimension, so they feel really nice on your feet. Is she okay? <laughs> yeah, she's fanning to... Yeah, it's the, so refreshingly the, cool in here. The coolness. Can't you feel it? It's it actually... Is. It's really nice. I'm gonna take nice. the beer that they have on the counter and drink it, and then just keep going. <laughs> to your delight, it's like cool beer that washes down your throat. It's like cold, oh frozen water coming down. Oh, I grabbed the other one from the lady who I assume also <laughs> set it down and I drink hers uh -huh. as well. And now I'm just, I'm fanning, but I'm back, baby. Uh, I, <laughs> um, we'll be back, they say as they okay. head out. Bring more of that beer. Woo! Back in the bar, across the way. Lazuli's there. You just lay down on find... the carpet while they're down. Mm -hmm. You said you Mostly... want to find uh, the wizard. Priority is sending more people over to the shop. I'm I'm trying to spread the word and get people to tell okay. each other and all that. Yeah. Um, ooh, next up, you come across the... Don't worry about it. The... Um... Ooh, these are terrible names here. Ugh. Not full names off the backs of credit cards, people. There's nothing in the terms and agreements that are... Just give me one of those uh, numeric names that is trending right now, you know. Oh, like a, right. Like an address, maybe. A... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the um, the uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 sisters, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, ah, yes, it is the... We're not keep this around all the time. The Cobalt Triplets. Uh, they are three sisters, all born at the same time. And they are um, the rarest oddity of all. They're elves. Triplet elves, one of a kind thing. Never happened before, probably never gonna happen again. Um, and they also live in town and you, you see them in the bar as well. I will go talk to them. Uh, they see you uh, and they each have a glass of ale in there or a mug of ale in their hands and the three of them all go hi in that weird creepy sort of unison but it's also kind of fun and but at the same time like you guys from some sort of shining movie i don't know um do they dress the same yes it's very disconcerting they say it's do just they like have the same shoes um no 
one has yellow, one has green, and one has sort of like an orange. But although it's like the same shoe, but like the fabric is different, They're like soft slippers. I noticed the shoes and I'm like, oh, so nice. Who made those? Oh, well, mm, they, they begin to, one of them says, oh, and the other says, well, and the third one <laughs> will say, don't you know, we got them over at, oh, um, the, the temple of shoes, the, the cathedral of shoes, the, the, uh, oh, those are the, the worst. temple of shoes. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Did they not have multiple ones in the same color so you could all match? No, they say in unison. And then the first one says, they had many different styles. The second one says, we decided to make it easy for people to tell us apart. And the third one says, we got different colors just for you. Well, you, he says with a hand wave. Great, well, do you all have the same size foot? Yes, in unison. That must be really convenient when you're getting shoes made. I bet I bet shoe companies usually give you a good discount, right? They furrow their brows. No. Well, I mean, I run the shoe shop next door and, and if someone came in and, you know, said we have three people with the same size foot, I'd sure be excited because we'd only have to carve you one last. We'd be able to make shoes for you from that one last without having to do extra work. Sister Helen never said anything about that. We've been having to pay full price for three different sets of shoes. Well, how long have you been doing to, this deal? Far be it for me to criticize, but uh, Sister Helen's not known for her customer-centric approach. Oh, that's Whereas, true. Yeah, she's you know, very weird. I think she's quite off-putting. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, we've actually conditioned the air in our store to make our customers more comfortable today. If, in fact, if you wanted to go get a last done, we're, we're, you know, chilling the store. We've got some refreshments. You can take your beer over there if you want. Get a last just oh, carved today. really? They all mm -hmm. say in unison. Um, and give me a persuasion check. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I can just click on my sheet. Mm -hmm. But we treat all nines and lowers as if they were tens. Huzzah! Oh, not that you need it. <laughs> um, yeah, the triplets will go to the bar, grab a new drink each, and head on over to the shop. And who would you find at the bar other than Mr. and Mrs. Visa? Oh, did did you guys have a fun time at the shop? Boldara stole our drinks. Yeah. What? She just took them and drank them. We're headed back, though. It was nice in oh. there. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I'm sorry about that. Uh, you know, next one's on us. If, if she, you know. Don't mind if you do. And they yeah, I'll buy charge you for the, the drinks. Yep, it'll be a silver. Um, so That's you fine. can get up to the bar and pay for these drinks as the sisters get theirs and these two get theirs. And you can see the bartender is just like running back and forth. He's never been so busy in his life. Um, and he's, you know, calling for a new barrel to be brought out. And there's a, you know, a pair of half works that are hauling this big, heavy barrel from the back of the room all the way up here and placing it on the counter. Um, it's, a, it's a really fast paced environment in this, uh, in this bar right now. I'll tell the bartender like, Hey, we're letting people, uh, take drinks over to our store. It's, it's nice and cool in there. So if you need more space in here, you can send customers over. We'll. We'll take them and send them back when they want another drink. Sure, sure, whatever. He waves you off as he like runs to the next person to you know, fill their order. The shop is starting to get a, the bar is starting to get a little bit packed. Um, getting a little, getting a little squished up here. There's a little, what do you call it a bleacher style steps that go up for the, the all the shorter peoples to get to the bar. Um, and you're feeling the. The other halflings the and a couple other no uh, dwarves of the area kind of muscling up next to you to try and get to the bar and, and put in their orders. I, I'm going to switch from the personalized approach to the just like party canvassing approach. Have you heard next door? Next door? You've heard about next door? Okay, great. Yeah, next door. Cool air. Take your drink. Next mm -hmm. door. Next mm -hmm. door. Excellent. All right. So following the three sisters and Mr. and Mrs. Visa as the five of them all arrive back at the shop together. The door opens. Well, actually, before the door opens, there was there's a minute, a couple minutes of downtime where the two of you are here alone. Did you have any plans to make before the the crowd uh, arrives? Uh, next time, Boldara, 
Don't drink their drinks. That's not good. It, they left because of that. We need them to stay, right? Well, I, 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 if they're coming back, they're coming back. If they're not coming back, I mean, whew. I'm just like kind of totally tapped out, laying on the cool carpet in between, like fanning rounds. <laughs> I just saw him bring the drinks on the shoes. Mm. All right. Well, in it comes the five of them. The door kicks open. There's no knocks. It's just like, mm. ding, ding, as the five of them walks in and the three sisters in unison, the triplets go, oh, wow, this is nice. And unison together as Mr. and Miss Avisa come in and go, hey, but you got to watch out for that one. She's going to take your drink. Um, <laughs> And they all begin to walk around. One of the, the triplets leans over the counter and goes, ooh, what's back there? Yes, yeah, so that's our exclusive areas for people that decide to make custom last today. That's it's what we're here for, first she says. You are? How amazing. Yes, uh, your other companion said that we could all get the same last made for us, and another sister chimes in, because we all have the same shoe size, and the third sister will chime in, Whoa. and then it would cut down on the price of our shoes if we ordered from you. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yes, it Whose would. Whose foot do you want to carve? You can pick whoever wants to sit down, but all three of you can come back here. Well, I said, I had the one with the beers. They, with the beers. they walk back on in. Um, they stand in a circle and they go, <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. And they all throw rock. Row, <laughs> sham, bow. They all throw scissors. This is going to take a while. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Visa are here again, and they're jealously guarding their drinks oh. as they begin to look around. Now, you said you have some clutches on display? We have me... the one, right? It's a, it's a prototype. Prototypes. It's a prototype. Mm. Uh, I, I try showing it while the others are playing rock, rock paper, scissors. Well, uh, so I'm like, you... ooh, so we're going to do more of those custom orders. The first order is going to get a special green background. I get like always a little bit too much into the details. Sounds like And it. people but, like step listening. But I want to know, what is it? What does your prototype look like? You're genius designers. Um, and also, Seltzer, if you don't have inspiration, you got to take it. You are fanning the crap out of that room. <laughs> I am so impressed right now. The sisters put their now. drinks down? Did they put their drinks down to play the yeah, Russian? Well, they have to in order to properly. Okay, I'm taking one. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, back. Voltara, cool. you're going to eat up all of our profits. I'm going to have to go get more drinks. But sell me on your clutch. What does it look like? You, we went out all blah, 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 blah. we went all out last week as you were describing your your shoes we don't need to go into that much detail but give me a give me something right what is it a, is it a little is it a mini clutch is it a, a huge clutch is it flat is it surfaced is it detailed is it is it leather is it vinyl is it there's no vinyl uh, is it is it canvas is it metal accoutrement any of you Oh, me? I think it's envelope right. style. Easy to make, little low hardware, classy, good for any occasion, easy to turn into a crossbody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, envelope style clutch means the top folds down over it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. turn into a crossbody means that it can have a long enough chain that it can go across to you diagonally. Yeah, especially okay. because so if if you have We're like the the lid that goes like this, right? Uh -huh. You can take a chain and you can just put it like this so that you close oh, the top and it right, becomes right. a crossbody bag. So it's a convertible. Got it. Okay. Um, and the crossbodies that I'm seeing are fairly large. No, no, no. They mm. come in variable sizes. Okay. So how big are we talking here? Let like, me find what's... a perfect envelope crossbody. What do we expect people to carry in them? We haven't Usually invented drugs. that yet. <laughs> okay, here, yeah, we'll, we'll do the Saint Laurent one. <laughs> uh, because we've talked about, you know, finding the most expensive possible versions of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna do something in this style, which I will put up for chat in just a moment. That bag um, is currently on sale for $1,790. Ridiculous. There must be a I solid know. gold chain on it. <laughs> no, there's just the letters YSL on it. 
I'm so glad I got into a cheap hobby like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Never anything to buy. Um, okay. Fashion. And we, so we, we talked about, cause you said that all the prototypes have been made and then we have mm -hmm. one being made. So I feel like there may be multiple styles available. Mm hmm. Okay. So I want to have the prototypes set out. Got it. Okay. So it's like this, but you've got, you know, a leather one and a canvas one and one with a cord and one with a small chain and, and, and like a larger like... size and a smaller size. Right. Right. Okay. So the, uh, the, the visas, <clears throat> great name for, for shopping apparently are, are looking <clears throat> over at this clutch and lady visa, Mrs. Visa. Uh, she comes across the leather one that has sort of, is that stitching? There's kind of like an up and down texture like this. I don't know what to call mm -hmm. it. That's yeah, stitching, stitching, yeah. Cool. It's um, It's got like stitching in a, a big, uh, ooh, no, um, like C style stitching where it kind of comes down from the top and then meets in the bottom. And so it's like a series of concentric C's for the, the mm -hmm. cobbler's quarry. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or is a cute word, but we don't worry about that right now. Oh, hold on. Um, I can find a coach one so that we have an actual picture of something with C's all over it. Keep talking. Give yeah, me so she finds one of these. It's leather, but it's been dyed sort of like um, a, a light. Uh, it's like um, not like a, a really brown, like a, a sable leather, the color that I'm talking about. Sable's a color, right? Um. No, that is way too dark. What's like the... Hope. Hope. Yeah, grayish. Yeah, yeah. Taupe. What is the the leather that's like kind of soft and fuzzy, and you see it on the jacket with the fringes? Suede. Suede. Yeah, that like light brown suede color. Um, thank you. So she she's going for one of those. That seems to be her style, and but she doesn't like that it's got the metal cord on it. She wants it with the, uh, she doesn't like the metal chain. She wants the, the the cotton cord. And so she'll bring this up to Boldara, who's like constantly doing the fanning and is very busy. And we'll be like, excuse me, uh, I really like this, but can you get it in? Can, can we swap out the cables? Is she touching it? Is she yeah, holding, holding the product it. right now? She's holding the product in your hand. Were there two hands? No, she's, we're just got, touch no she's got a beer in one hand. And she's got the, the clutch in the other hand. And she's like, excuse me, miss. Excuse me, I shop got, worker. Let me see. Let this me see. one. This thing. Let me see. Let me this see. This one. Right here. This one. Oh, it's... And I reach past the clutch. And I'm going to take the beer. And I'm going to drink it. And then I'm going to keep fanning. I'm like, ask my sister. Why? I, I've i never <laughs> seen such. You guys are ruining all my hard work. Such, and she turns to... to um. <clears throat> to, to they Pebble are and still shopping. <laughs> Where's her sister? <sighs> I'm so sorry. It's not it's easy good. when we're down one member. Mm -hmm. um, uh, How long okay. does the cooling last, by the way? Like an hour. The, the cantrip. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna start like helping them with the clutch, but I'm gonna try to hurry up because I also need to go make the last. Yeah. Well, don't and worry, the three sisters are still playing rock, paper, scissors, and they keep oh, growing the same thing. <laughs> That's okay. I cannot handle that amount of customers all at once. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna... How can I help you? I want this same thing, but instead of the silver chain, mm -hmm. I would like the green cord. Can you do that for me? Green actually, cord actually, she said I should find her sister. Um, where's her sister? She's at the bar. Well, but I, I noted your order, uh, green card instead of silver chain, uh, for this special clutch. Yes. Um, uh, did we ever establish a price? I don't think we did. No. That's all you're yeah. expensive. Do we know how much those materials would cost? Generally. Yeah, you would probably, you know, these are prototypes. These aren't finished versions. You can get like a material cost for them. I think uh, in these early prototypes, you know, you're not using expensive materials. You're just using like whatever you have on hand. So they're yeah. pretty cheap. Uh, I think each one is maybe uh, on the order of a, a few silver to make. Mm. OK, 
Okay. I have all these pictures now, Anna. What am I doing? What what are <laughs> You just said an envelope clutch with concentric C's on it, so I gave you three different ones. <laughs> to choose from. These all have concentric C's on them? Yeah. Well not concentric, they have repeated C's. Oh okay, I see. Oh, okay. Um, uh they're they're coming into focus now. So which one is your last, bag like? The last one I literally have. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one that you are the coach bag? That's the, the one. The brown one with the black. They're all coach bags. Oh, I'm sorry. Two. I'm sorry. I meant the one with the words coach on it. But... <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one that says coach on it is the one I actually own. Okay. And is that the one that we're going to be modeling your bag after? <laughs> sure. Okay. Excellent. Why not? It's cute. Cool. Uh, so you said a few silver, like. Yeah. Three, four, yeah, one. Like four, three or four silver to, to make. You know, you're using like spare parts that you have lying around, so it's hard to to evaluate them. So if we were to make a real one, would I think that like it would be around that price point as well to craft? No, you'd make it with better quality, put more time in it. You you know, at the end of the day, it's probably going to be a couple gold. gold to maybe create two gold. from scratch. Yeah, when you have like the nice materials and you take the time to do it, if you're including labor and everything, um, yeah. Well, then it probably would be more like a five or six gold sell. Whatever you, I mean, you, you're you here selling bags to drunk people. Like you, you set your <laughs> price, baby. I'm going to tell them that it's uh, six gold. Because it's and custom. See, because it's custom and see what Five they're gonna... without substitutions six yeah. with the custom well you're not there so i'm just like six six gold because <laughs> uh it's the first series so they're exclusive mrs visa turns to her husband <clears throat> sweetie she says with her empty cup because boldara drank it all go fetch the money so <laughs> we can buy this bag and they're gonna make the the alterations Mr. Visa goes, okay, but I'm going to get another cold drink on the way back. And he stumbles out of the bar shop, out of the, the, the cobbler shop to the house to get some money. Um, and as he does, look out the door and you see the crowd coming because over there, Lazuli has been pitching up the air-conditioned place. And soon the horde of drunken shoppers descends upon the party, coming en masse into your air-conditioned restaurant. And you can stop fanning now, Seltzer, because we're <laughs> going to go to break, and we'll come back on the other side with some more city dwarves. Just hot here. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to City Dwarves. So, the door is opening, and bumbling into your shop is the, the horde of drunken shopgoers. Um, and they're all coming in here and they're all going, oh my God, it's so nice in here. Isn't it nice in here, Stan? It's great in here, Jeff. And uh, soon there's this new sensation in the the warm but cool sh cooling shop. This like um, wetness in the air and the, the stench of body odor and beer. <laughs> Um, but on the other hand, there's a lot of drinks and that little uh, little shop counter that you've got going on just turns into a makeshift bar. And so there's a constant flow of drinks on it. Um, what are you doing? I want to uh, find a child or someone who I can give a silver or two to be our glass runner to clear glasses and take them back to the bar. Yes, you can employ a child. There are no laws against it at this time in the world. Um, easy peasy. You hand them a pair of silver, take it off of someone's character sheet, and they will start moving. They'll start moving glassware or woodware as it may be here. Okay, so the flow is these customers kind of meandering, get caught up in the cool air, place the glasses down. The glasses mysteriously become half to completely empty for some reason, and then this child takes them away. Yeah, that's the plan. I would like to be that mysterious reason. Excellent. 100% can do. Uh, so it sounds also like Lazli might have come back to... The, the shop now that you've sent over a lot of people and it's beginning to fill up. Yeah, I think 
Do you come back? As well? Yeah, but I want to meet the wizard. Uh. Okay. So before I, I guess okay, okay. Go so, for it. You no, know, you. I thought you were gonna say something. No, I was gonna like set the stage for when she comes back and like explain how I'm doing, mm. but. If she's gonna meet the wizard first, I guess you can like. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That. Well, then, um, how do you intend on meeting this wizard? Hey. She's gonna cat call the wizard. It's just... Hey. Um, no, you can get. You can talk to the bartender. You don't actually see this wizard or sorcerer anywhere. Um, they're not apparent. Hmm. Where's this wizard everyone's talking about? To whom are you posing this question? The bartender. Ah, right, the bartender. Super busy, he's got these drinks flowing. Um, he hears wi wizard, sorcerer, you mean. Sorcerer, oh, traveling yeah, yeah. sorcerer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, down in the basement, working hard. Okay, I go down to the basement. Can I go down to the basement? <laughs> no, I, I try to, to go down to the basement. Yeah, I, mean, I try to can... go anyway. Sure. Um, give They're busy. Me... Yeah, just me. give me a stealth check. Yeah, let's just see if you casually walking that direction with your natural um, eight. It's not great. What is the penalty for passive perception when you have disadvantage? E to passive disadvantage. Uh, if you have disadvantage, add minus five to your passive checks. Okay, so the bartender has a wisdom score of eight, I which make... is real bad for a bartender. Um, so that's a pass. Yeah, Great. it's busy. It's real busy and he's not paying attention. And you could just kind of go through the saloon style doors and then there's the staircase that goes down. That's where those half orcs are bringing out those barrels. Um, and as they go down, you can just follow behind them. I do. You are there. You make your way down to the basement. The, the sweaty half orcs are coming on over um, and you can see that there is indeed some sort of wizard or sorcerer or spellcaster person with like super long matted together hair who's like hunched over some sort of cauldron on like a tiny little three-legged stool and there's a whole bunch of components on one side and some stirring implements on another side and they're muttering to themselves they're like tossing things in and then stirring and then tasting and then tossing some more things in and uh, the half orcs are just standing around waiting to move something um you're coming can up I... behind the person so you can't see before i talk to them can i see what they are making like what ingredients they're using what they're putting in there Ooh. yeah Give me a really good perception check to see if you can like make out what those ingredients are. Not good enough. No. no. no, no Does it look like stuff? Like, cause you said they're bringing up barrels of beer. Does it look like this is something other than barrels of beer? I can at least tell. The things that are being put into this cauldron definitely don't seem like normal beer ingredients, but maybe it's just like the spell components that turns the barrels or the fluids therein cold. You know, like, sometimes spell components are added to things that doesn't, mm -hmm. you know? Anyway. I'm just gonna watch him for a while. Okay. Like, nobody's noticing me, I'm just gonna, like, chill. Oh, the half-orcs roll a natural two on their perception check, so they are just hanging, uh, looking forward, waiting for this person to finish the thing. That their person is mixing these weird things. It seems like lots of like powders or like dried leaves or something. Some sort of thing you can grab by the handful and sprinkle in with the with the left hand and the right hand is like got a wooden spoon and then like a silver spoon and then like some sort of uh, cast iron fork that is being used to turn stir this stuff together. Yeah. After, no one says uh, anything. No, no. Not for not for two minutes. It's just pretty quiet uh -huh. down there. Um, and then there's like a, a hiss and like a bit of a puff and a little bit of smoke begins to rise before the person and the wizard <clears throat> kicks back. 
uh, in her stool and says, ah, the next one's done. Take it up. And the half orcs will come over and they'll grab the cauldron either side, lift it and dump it into a barrel, top it and uh, pick up the barrel. And in the process of picking up the barrel, they see you. Hi. But you're down here, so you must be allowed to be down here and they don't care. And so they move mm-hmm. on past you. Um, but the, the wizard, the sorceress, will, will turn around and give you a look and go, I don't remember you. Who Hi. are you? I'm Lazily. I offer my hand. She looks at it suspiciously. Lazily, like the rock? Yeah, not many people get that. What's your name? My name? Ryzen. Nice to meet you, Ryzen. Is, are all those components just to make the beer cold? Or are you putting something special in there? No, just to make the beverages cold. Cool. I'm what something are you doing a... down here? I came to meet you. I didn't know I had visitors. Well, How someone long told have me you that... been standing there? Oh, not long. Didn't make yourself known immediately? You seem busy. I didn't want to interrupt an artist at work. Hmm, I appreciate that. Now, what can I, I do I'm something for of you? a magic user myself. I understand the demands on someone's concentration. Yes, it's very demanding to get everything just right. You wouldn't want me to add an extra half hand of, um, of thistle, would you? <laughs> Not that. For sure. Um... <laughs> So what, what brings you to town? What what brought you to this job? Ah, uh, money, of course. What else mm. would it bring me here for? No, no, I have grand designs and I, I need to finance them somehow. A day or two in this oppressive heat selling cold drinks should do the trick. Mm, what are your grand designs? Wouldn't you like to know? Uh, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> You're a pretty affable character. But I get to treat it as a 10. You do. So it's a 15, actually, then. Is your minimum rolls a 15 now? Guess so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I take it back. Um, so you, she says, you know, you, wouldn't you like to know? And you laugh and she laughs and then she goes, well, since you asked so, so politely, I'm going to build something up on the mountains. I'm going to build a great tower. It will reach hundreds of feet up into the sky and I will harvest the lightning and the waters from the clouds, I will bring forth torrential rains and harness the power of every bolt that would strike the nearby area to channel that that raw energy into uh, I, I, the, the, the specifics of what it is into doesn't matter. You've got me carried away. I'm going to build a very large tower up on the mountains. That sounds incredible. Harnessing lightning? Yes. You've got to keep me updated. This sounds amazing. Well, it might be a little beyond your abilities. What what do you do, dabbler in magic, who's named for a rock? I don't understand electricity, right? No. Do I have an understanding at all of what conducts lightning or not? Like if someone gets struck by lightning and they're wearing shoes versus not wearing shoes? No, no, no. We're in the day and age where people are like, lightning never strikes the same place twice. And you're like, oh my God, have you ever seen this whole building? (laughs) Okay. Um, I, uh, I'm one of the owners of the shop next door. The, um, leather worker and cobbler. Rachel, roll me a d20 for this sorcerer's interest in your potential wares. High is good, low is bad. Oh, high is good? Okay, hold on, let me read. High is good. Yeah, re- retype that stuff. Yeah. Oh. High is good. High is good? High is, high is that she's interested in your wares. Mm. Low is that she's disinterested or doesn't care. She has no feet. I want to say hooves. Okay, no. but what if I said 
you should be interested in our wares. <laughs> and then roll a persuasion check. <laughs> if you can give her any reason why she might be interested, <laughs> like why would she, you know, you say you're, you do cobbler and leather crafting and she kind of like, like the wind goes out of her sails and they, the interest in her conversation immediately begins to dwindle as she starts to turn back to the cauldron again and go, well, I wouldn't want to take you away from your skin working. Well, I couldn't help but notice that your your component's pouch looks a little worn. If you wanted, we could we could make you a travel pouch that would make it easier to, to do things on the go like this. How would it make it easier? Well, you know, just always having something at hand, a little, a little satchel as opposed to your big, your big bag there. Or, I mean, you know, if you're going to be building a tower, you're going to need some really sturdy work shoes. Oh, <laughs> dear me, I won't be building it myself. I have minions to do the actual lifting of stones. That's why oh, I'm here to get the money. Then you need shoes that look really good, so the minions want to follow you. But do you have? Do the people around here have some strange foot fetish? Do they, do they follow people based on the, their style of shoe? Doesn't everyone? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, all they strange. Do. Is that really how things work around here? Yep. <laughs> she makes a de- uh, an insight check against your deception. Is your deception automatically ten yeah. as uh-huh. well? Uh huh. Really? Are you? Uh-huh. Sh- I'm gonna. I have to double check that because that I don't like. Oh, well, she did above ten anyway. Mm-hmm. Oh no, she did a nine, so it would be boosted. No, I did fourteen. Oh, deception too. Oh. Gosh darn. Okay. Oh, is, oh but it, is it like base ten or is it ten yeah. with modifiers? Nine or lower becomes a ten, so yeah, you're right. Okay. It would be a fifteen. So it's plus she one to fifteen. Buys it a hundred percent that that is how the people of this area work. It's based on like how good your footwear is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have yeah, traveled. Yeah, just stop by when you're done. Over here, we have a nice air-conditioned shop. Oh, that's that means that the air inside is cool. Cooler than outside. Not wild. I've been making cold beer all day long. Not that wild. Very similar to what I do. Some might even say it's a knockoff of what I do. Well, how is cooling air the same as cooling beer? I thought of it first. You did. You totally did. Anyway, I'll see you later. Nice to meet you, uh, Risen. 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 Yes. Yes. Okay, bye. Goodbye. What was your name again, Rock Lady? Lazily. Lazily. Yes, yes. Well, enjoy your air conditioned shop. And, um, uh, by the way, how much are your footwear? It completely depends on the shoe. Yes, if I needed to hire a small army to build a tower for me, what sort of um, investment might that take? Hmm. We could do something nice up for you for like 500 gold. There's a little math in her head. Can it have the little little silver faces with open mouths and and little teeth along the open mouths as if they're they're crying out that might be a little extra just for the silver work but we could probably help you out yes excellent well i will come by the shop sometime this evening after their business closes will you still be awake or do you need your beauty sleep <laughs> i'll still be awake but bless you Yes, yes, you have enough beauty for all of us, I see. Good be gone now. And she turns back to her cauldron <laughs> as the half orcs come stumbling back down again. I'll go back to the shop. All right. Um, back in the shop, the crowd is here. They're sweeping through the doors. They're all drunk and they're all handling everything. <laughs> I'm trying to like arm block them into the foyer. So we don't have too many people walking into the I'm shoe like- area. I, you come back to the store, Leslie, and we're like completely overrun, All right? Like, I'm just trying to like get people to stop like touching things and I'm trying to sell them stuff, but nobody's listening to me. So just like, I'm just making noise from that down there and I'm like, <laughs> I'm teary eyed, it's not working. 
the, the dwarves and the halflings that are in your shop have like had to climb into the rafters and those upper areas where you no. store things just to like get away from the sea of people who are coming into the cold place. But while they're up there, you know, dwarves aren't necessarily the most um, body aware people all the time. You know, they might be knocking off a, a crate or a bolt of cloth or a box of last that just spill out all over the floor. Now no. you gotta no, mash no, the no. left and the right like, ones again. No. Yeah, I'm no. just picking back up like behind people. Like that, I'm damage control is my purpose at this point. Where are our cats and where's Protoni? The cats are gone. They are not. This is too many people. They don't know them, and they're everywhere, and they're clumsy and they're drunk. Uh, the cats Respected. have fled. Yeah, uh, Proton. I guess they would be like in our rooms upstairs or something, hidden in like yeah. the cupboards with all of our gold. You can always play. Where's the cat? Yeah. Not um, cupboard, whatever it's called. Closets. Gold closets. Mm -hmm. The cats. Uh, Proton? You told Proton to make cookies. And there's just heat coming out of the kitchen. You know, because the cookies are almost done. And the, the drunk shoppers can smell the cookies. That smells uh, delicious! They, they cry out. What? What is that? One of them comes that's... and asks. It's cookies. They're, they're in the street and the backyard. Definitely not inside the building. The cookies are in the street and the backyard is where they'll be served. They will be served outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People mill about. You know, we'll, we'll stay inside until the cookies are done. Um, Lazuli, when you get here, the door is already open and like there's just a back in the doorway. And you can see like under the legs, there's just more legs and more legs and more legs. And it's just like that the shop is packed. Mm. With, with the occasional cry of, oh, this is real nice. I'll just kind of like try to worm my way into the workroom. Mm -hmm. All right, you can shove a little here, excuse me a little there, you know, start to, to elbow and shoulder your way through. Can I, I get a perception check from all three Dwarven sisters? Oh, by the way, the, the triplets have decided on a coin flip to decide who should be getting the feet carved. Um, and it is the oldest Cobalt sister, because they keep track of who's the oldest, like like twinsies do. Um, and her name is Vibe. <laughs> All right. Lazuli with the 20 perception. It's as you're coming in, elbowing past these people that you notice you notice one of these new drunken shopgoers has uh, taken one of your prototypes, just whooped it into their into their uh, sweater or shirt or jacket or whatever whatever you call the top that they wear. I'll sidle up to them and say, "If you buy two of those, I won't report you to the law." They look down at you and goes. Who the fuck are you? Why do you give a shit? Cause I own this place, buddy. <laughs> uh. Okay. But can you catch me? Any bolts for the door? Stop, thief! That's a There's so shot. many people. There's so many people here. There's no way someone can push through quickly. You're right. They can't push through quickly. You've got a full round. Stop them. Also, do we have any allies in the crowd who would just like be standing in the doorway and just be like, no? Maybe. I feel like we would. Maybe. What are you gonna do? How, what are you gonna do on your turn as you call stop thief? Are you, is that like a, an attempt to persuade people to stop them? Or is that a, a cry for, you know, in, in general? Are you gonna just tackle them? What is your, what's the plan? I'm gonna try to grab his leg as he goes by. Ooh, excellent. I get an oppie. Yeah, make me. A, did you say an opportunity attack as an oppie? Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, give me an athletics check to to grab a leg. Oh, oh I am on fire today. Anna's op. Knock on wood. 
All right. Well, here's his counter check. It's a three. Um, <laughs> yeah, you grab the leg. The guy falls down in the crowd. It's a, you know, he falls, but he, like, hits the crowd, and someone's like, get off of me. And, and like, a beer flies. It spills all over the next people who turn around. And, you know, they, these mugs are heavy, and they're made of wood. And then as someone turns, they, like, knock into somebody else and some more beer. It's starting to get a little rowdy in here. Everyone's really drunk, because this is the only way to cool off before they came into the shop was beer. And so they've been drinking a lot. And mm. um, this the thief falls to the ground and you can deal with the thief because they're kind of dazed by it all. But a small brawl is beginning to make out. Mm. The breakout. You brawls That's break a different out. kind <laughs> of brawl. <laughs> yeah. Very different yeah. kind of brawl. Not this <laughs> campaign. Right that's our... slip right there. It's getting sexy in the shoe shop. <laughs> That's City Dwarves After Dark. Um, that's yeah. our special. You have to pay <laughs> Sorry, to watch I, the campaign. The hours <laughs> uh, get me every time. Yeah. Um, uh, if they're all here for the cool, uh, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm actually solving two of the problems as Goldara by ceasing to fan and starting to bludgeon uh, people <laughs> who are swinging their mugs around. And as many as I can, I'd like to grab whatever has liquid in it chug it, and then carefully set it on the counter. I am doing a service. Uh, give me an athletics check, Boldara, for how good you are at stealing people's mugs in the crowd. And don't roll a 20, because I'm tired of your 20s. Me? I'm <laughs> tired got... of the 20s? You are I'm mistaking me for my sister, sir. Athletics, boom. what I get? Oh, thank God. Seven. Uh, it's not going so well for you. Uh, I think the issue, the core issue here is that when they realize that you're doing this, people just raise the mugs a foot in the air. Rude. So I'm just... Yeah. Yeah. I am switching to rabbit punches. Start, it's like... a reflex, Neil. Those mugs are coming back down. Okay. All right. So you're rabbit punching your customers. You've tackled the customer oh, who's trying to steal like things. And Pebble, dear, poor, forgotten Pebble, who are you Are you carving the lasts of the, the sisters who finally agreed to do some business with you? What are yeah. you doing? What are you doing, Pebble? I'm carving the lasts. I don't Where? know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> you got the three elven sisters I'm trying to give them a really good customer experience they're all gathered around they're making all these snide remarks about how drunk the like uh... humans and halflings are they specify the humans and halflings you know mm. they're they're considerate of, of your people um, oh. and... you're right there's no respect anymore nowadays yeah and, and they seem to be having a pretty good time they've got the full attention of one of the people here they're off like they're one of the first ones in so they've got like the deepest in corner yeah. section which is the least packed they're sitting down someone's tending to them like it, the last is not the same mm. as a pedicure but like there's some measuring and some like yeah. holding and squeezing that goes on like it's the closest uh, thing that you can get to a foot massage that without getting yeah. one you're bothered by their sound level, right? Is what you're saying. The noise is bothering you. No. No? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. You're talking to the sisters. You're not talking to them. Yeah. No, <laughs> the sisters. Because were, they were saying they were a little rowdy and everything. Makes total sense. I'm just... It's hot in here. Sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> you're wondering why it's hot in game. It's because it's hot in the real world. Um, <laughs> role play yeah uh well you know it's hot but or it, it, it's loud but what, what do you expect living in a city like this you know we probably should never have left the forest but here we are uh, and um we'll experience it and uh, if it means it's noisy and rowdy so be it I, I could quiet it down for you let me let me try something i would like to cast silence in the other room <laughs> We'll see how much fun they have now that they can't even talk to each other. <laughs> so the guy gets tackled, right? And I assume Lazli like crawls up and you know gets the mm-hmm. the, the purse. I hold him. it up. Thief. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, you know this, this starts a small brawl, and then Boldara starts rabbit punching the people who are holding the drinks away, which causes them to double over and spill their drink on Boldara. 
and it begins to get out of hand and has the volume and the noise and the, the excitement and the sweat and the stink all begins to rise. Um, everything goes silent. It just goes like dead silent in the room. But the panic doesn't stop. In, in fact, it only increases. And now it's like a silent movie brawl, but you got to do the soundtrack in the head. And it's just people like throwing at each other and clawing at each other. And the whole thing is a mess. Uh, to me, it's like, to me, it's a lot more zen because like suddenly it's silent. So I can just like cast my last in peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's much nicer. So I'm like, ah. <sighs> and yeah. silence just like muffles all ability to hear sound in the, in the radius. Zero sound. Yeah. Well, you can hear yourself whisper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But but it doesn't stop you from feeling the vibrations in the floor and in the walls and in the, the all the, the things in the room are still vibrating with the energy of the the mob which is turning mm -hmm. ugly. See Stovel, we thought ahead and didn't mine underneath the shop. <laughs> <laughs> um the people near the door start to get out because it's, it's a little spooky in here. The, the people <clears throat> further in are trying to claw their way out or, you know, move their way out, but that's going over the, the counter or in between the two counters, but that's just knocking over the people in the other room and in the atrium, which is where Lazuli is. And you've got the, you've got the prototype clutch that this person was running off with. Um, and then you're hit like from above by the bodies of the people who are crawling out from the back room. And you're getting buried, Lazuli. You're getting buried by the customers that you're here to serve. I'm going to Ooh, cast. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to cast. Minor illusion. Does it require my verbal own... components? No. Okay. That's fine. Of then. my own voice, which I can do. It says in the spell. Yes. But and it's I will still be the silence. Own... Right? Because you. Because it's it's quiet in the area. Oh, so I couldn't. I couldn't make Oops, my sorry. spell because her spell yeah because her spell is higher level mm. and it, it stops all sounds yeah yeah okay, sorry well, then i'm just gonna try to i'm just i'm just gonna try to fight into the workroom mm. all right to a safer place give me an athletics check Mm -mm. Oh, it's a natural one. Just as you're starting to make your way out, some heavy creature comes and just like thuds right on top of you and you are fallen into the press. Um, we're going to flip over this to This is Boldar. what happens when I say I'm on fire or give any credence to the fact that I'm rolling well. Immediately, the gods are like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boldara, you are actually trying to to maybe solve some of these problems uh, as best as you can. Um, it, it might be rabbit punches, but it, you're, you're here. Um, mm -hmm. Give me a perception check. Maybe there's a chance that through that little lower window, you were able to see that Lazuli's on the other side. No. I'm going to go with four. You know, no. you, you're not even aware that she's here, but you can tell that things have gotten out of hand and that no business is getting done today. Yes. Um, and you can see your other sister is like, Happily sitting, carving a last, holding up to a foot, just like going about her business with like a, a tranquil smile as if the goddess Eris herself had uh, sat down next to her. That's how I know it's truly going off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you gonna uh, manage the situation? Yeah, I see that like, as much as I'm rabbit punching people, getting a hold of their mugs and drinking them dry, I'm not really solving much except my thirst, but I do have these two fans. It is completely silent. And I need attention, well, always, but <laughs> to stop the situation. <laughs> so, Neil, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am going to get attention by getting very big with my fans 
in what is going to become some sort of interpretive fan dance where I ask everybody to slow down, move towards the exits, and relax. You're and this is, I, Neil, I don't know if you want to make me roll for it, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's beautiful, arrestingly beautiful. I feel like ethereal with the silence. Rachel knows Big Goose energy, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you, these wings get wide. <laughs> My my family still uses big goose energy, Rachel. All my friends and family know big goose energy. It's an intuitive thing that we do. We're like, ah, ah, ah. the more excited you get, the more your wings go up. It's, it's the goose in all of us. I feel like um, you giggle one more time, Neil. You have to give it to me. <laughs> it's just so funny. Um, I want I do want you to make me a roll. I want you to make me a um, since it give me a persuasion check at advantage because for all the obvious reasons Please. 17 there you go you can it's quiet but when there's this big you know fan hand thing you must have gotten up on like a stool or a, a mm -hmm. workbench mm -hmm. or something to get their attention um people will see and what was the the motion to get them to leave the shop how do you how do you intuit that <laughs> it's beautiful <laughs> beautiful it really is um and bit by bit they will pour out into the street and as i watch them go uh is there anyone from the cobbler's guild that has entered our shop drunken and messy and is it the person who stole from us do we even know who that was laura's got a, a chunk it's missing out of their calf Lazo, i got him right was the dude who lived like right next door <gasps> no they watched our shop on the left no 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 no. There's, there's a nearby the cobbler oh. hmm. um he was the first cobbler you spoke to i lost oh, his wait. name let me go see cobble uh <laughs> hmm. sammy Rex. sammy you see sammy here um, friendly, cheerful, good old Sammy. Um, you do see him, and he is here, and he is pressed up into that corner near the front, uh, like with his back to everything, just kind of letting the, the crowd go past him. Huh. So uh, he's just waiting for us? Like he's got something to tell us at the end? Like... No, like, like he is waiting for people to get out of the way, and he's just like stuck against the wall as the crowd uh. moves past, and he's sort of you know, inadvertently stuck waiting his turn, probably because he's like too polite to be to like assert himself into the crowd, or maybe he's just not into the violence of it all. Um, he's there, and he sees okay. you looking at him. He looks at you as you're fanning. You want to? Do something with Sammy? No. No, I mean, if he's this nice guy and he's pressed up against the wall, it's gonna be really hard to pin this whole riot instigation on him. So I'm gonna need another target. <laughs> I'm trying to pin instigations on people. Oh, okay. it's just did my yeah. accent not betray my intentions? It did, but the, I was thrown off by the the grace of the 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 goose movements. It just kind of. No, yeah, you you feel like uh, we're one note people? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I really thought you had one trick in the bag, and that was all you could bring to the table. Wow. All right, <laughs> Lazuli, you can make your way out of the shop. Eventually, the, this heavy body gets off of you, but the crowd is surging that way, and you pull yourself, or you get pulled into the street as the the rowdy crowd makes their way out there. Um, you've got the the stolen merchandise in hand, though. Thankfully, um, is there anything you're interested in doing while you're out in the shot street with all these other people? And the, the crowd begins to slowly disperse and head back to the bar. Are we? We're not silenced out here. No, outside of the shop, you're good. 
uh, I'll go, thanks so much for coming to our launch event. What a great success. We're so happy to have had you. Can't wait for those of you who have ordered custom clutches to come back and pick those up. If you haven't yet, don't forget, come by in the next week or you will miss the first wave. Anyone who still hasn't gotten a last and would like one, come talk to me. Otherwise, we'll see you soon. You get someone coming up to you. Custom clutches? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you, have I don't you know. Seen... I just thought it was a cool shop. Oh, come see. Come see. I bring them back in. Mm. Uh, it's immediately yeah, I, silenced You meet again. me in utter silence. Like, huh. I, I go poke uh, Pebble because I know Pebble can do silence. Yeah. I, I turn around and I, I go like, yes, but then there's like no voice coming out of me. So I turn it back on. Ah. Get the fuck out of here! Get out of the shop! Get, get out! Get out! But like, get it out, took out, out. A, a little bit too long for me to turn it back on. I was like, I kept being like, I can't hear you, and then she's trying to tell me, and I'm like, this uh, <laughs> VIP customer would like to order a custom clutch. So Pebble, could you please take oh, their order and payment course. up front? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Okay. Um, Look at this. All right. I don't know if you can do this. Is gonna be red, okay? Like, like bright red, like bright blood red, okay? Okay, and it's gonna have like corkscrew style chain. You know, it's not a chain; it's like one big long corkscrew that goes all the way around. And like the end of the corkscrew can pop off, so you can actually use it like a corkscrew. And that way, I've got a corkscrew with my bag, and the bag's got to be about the size of a bottle of wine. So can, <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -mm. Well, that would be a large size and we would need to make some significant changes to the tanning process. We couldn't make a corkscrew chain. You but gotta we get the tannins important. The tannins yes, are very important. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we couldn't make a corkscrew chain, but we could very easily add a corkscrew toggle for you. I feel like that would be more efficient anyway. That's like genius, you know? Because then it just it just do. sits there and like it flops around and it's not like mm -hmm. a piece of metal that's wound over your shoulder all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm hmm Oh my God. Yeah, there would be quite a few custom improvements to this bag. So Pebble, I mean, we would have to charge at least what? Mm. 15 gold? Done, sold, can do it. <laughs> Pebble was about to bring the price down and is like baffled. Just Drunk Leslie's like, this people. person's drunk AF. That's so great. When is it going to be done? Is it done yet? Like, who's your maker? Uh, that's our our sister here, Proton. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you weren't one of the first to put your order in. So it may well, be a little while. Well, we can fix that. Like, who, who, show me the person who put in an order before, and I'll just, you know, I'll talk to them. I'll make it happen. Well, if you want to put a rush on your order, we certainly could move you up the list, but that again is a significant upcharge. How much of an upcharge? We're talking like 20 gold. Thanks. Pebble looks so confused about these price points. I get 20 extra gold. I can do it. I get it. Yeah, fine. 35 gold. Treat yourself. It's done. Absolutely. And, and okay. like, I'm Proton, like, at first she wrote, like, you know, the regular price. She had, like, 10 gold. And then she, like, crossed it out and write 15 gold. And then when she said 20 gold, Pebbles just, like, crossed out 15 and put 20, thinking it would be 20 total. And now it's 35. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> what's going on? Uh... Are we taking a down payment for this? Oh yeah, payment up front, always, of course. I have 20. I'll bring the 15 when it's done though. My like, I'm so good for it. Don't well, even worry. For you, for you, for you, I'll we'll be, do I mean, that. Look, obviously. Yeah. yeah. This is gonna be great. I've always needed a way to like, be on the lawn and like have all my supplies with me without having to have anything in my hands. 
and like not one of those ugly backpacks that all the like adventurers out in the woods do. Like I just need the da 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 da. Elegance, fine. absolutely. No, that's I mean, you came to the right place. Uh, if only they made a wine glass that wouldn't break. Uh. Mm. No. Maybe someday people will figure out how to use the bones of dinosaurs. Ugh, if only. Anyway. That was a plastic joke. Ciao. She <laughs> bounces. Rah. Um, Those are when they leave. Prices, Leslie. Well, Ooh, we're chic. we are selling custom designer goods, and they were very drunk. Soon, the room is just the three of you and the elven triplets who are still getting their feet carved. <laughs> <laughs> the first one's here, last one's to leave. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it takes a few hours for their the last to be done. Proton comes out with some cookies well before they're done, um, sees that it's just the six of you and that everyone else has left. Looks around and goes, I, I, was, I was making cookies for everyone. Sorry, a brawl broke out. I got really loud and I'm really quiet and I got worried, but then... But I figured that the, the, the cookies were almost done. They shouldn't, you know, the nutmeg has to go in at just the right time. And ah, Bodar takes a handful <laughs> and is um, and then oh is the God. rug still cold? Yeah. <laughs> Bodar is very drunk, so. Oh. And uh, but Proton goes around these... like moving things away. Anything that Boldara could pick up is just like shoved slightly further away from her. But look at these great orders we got. I show the custom clutch orders mm -hmm. and especially the the wine bag mm -hmm. that we just took. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Do they mm -hmm. do they specify anything about shape or, or size or capacity other than it could hold a wine bottle? Nope. So I get to sort of improvise? Mm-hmm. Oh, Only things were that it was the size of a, a wine bottle. It was red and it had a corkscrew toggle. Okay. That sounds fun. Thought you'd think so. Hmm. And, can, uh, can I have a cookie? <laughs> I, I know you meant them for the customers, but like these smell so good. Of course. Here. And she brings the tray over, hands them to you. I eat one, and then I offer some to the customers. The customers will, in unison, pick up a cookie and each take a bite, and then go, "Mmm, it's very nice," and then they stop. And they look at Proton, their heads all cocked to the right side at the same time. And their eyes focus, and you can see Proton like looks down and takes a sheet of cookies and, and hurries away back to the kitchen. And they look to... <laughs> they don't look to Pebble, obviously. But they look to Lazuli, and they go... Well, one of them goes, who is that? And another person goes, she looked familiar. And the third sister goes, is she new here? Uh, this is our adopted sister, Proton who does a lot of our leather work. All of our leather work. Proton? They say Protoni. all three together at once. <laughs> I go Protoni, not Proton. Protoni. They look in the direction Do of the door. Do you know each other? Well. I want to make sure I haven't already named this person. <laughs> We know Ion, they say in unison. It's and Ion, Ion has a child named Proton. One of them will speak up. Ion's the keeper of the acorns. Another one will speak up. Proton went missing a while ago. And the third one will speak up. Ion's been very worried about her. I can't be said Proton's got no mom. It's Proton's crazy. a very common no name. No mom. Is it? Mm-hmm. That's my impression, anyway. Yeah, I've met at least, like, three different protons in my life. Really? Mm-hmm. And this one, here? like, it, here is, like, in protons are short version of her name, right? Her full name's Protoni. <laughs> I rolled Persuasion and Deception, and both of them <laughs> rolled the exact same. Nice. But don't so, you get like a 10 as a base? Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be 15. 15. Mm hmm. They look at Proton, or the door through which Proton left. Look back at you. They shrug. 
they've had a couple drinks. They're getting their, their feet carved. You know, it's a good day. They're not hurrying off anywhere. Great. Yeah. And as they, you know, they finish up and they leave and the sun begins to set and the shop begins to cool down, not just from the cool rocks that you can continually cast uh, prestidigitation on, but you know, just because the sun's going down and a little breeze picks up coming off the ocean and the night begins to set in when there comes a rapping at your door. What's a uh, rapping? Uh, a knocking. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. You would like you wrap Spitting your knuckles on something. At your door. <laughs> I don't have any I can't even rhyme on all. Oh. I'm tired. Someone else get it. Blah. I get it. Okay. You open the door. I stand behind you. <laughs> hey. There's this short human woman that's sort of like hunched over on her back a little bit with this really gross matted hair. Um <clears throat> And kind of like a broad grin, she looks up at you and goes, Why, hello! Hey! What? Uh, are you hello. one of the rocks? Uh, who's asking? I'm rising. Are you mm. expecting me? You should be. Uh, Bolari just kind of turns around, but is like body blocking the woman looking for her sisters. I hear this and come forward. Ah, Ryzen, come on in. Sisters, uh, this is the sorcerer who was working next door looking to um, build an army of minions to then build a tower. And I let Ryzen know that if you're going to try to attract an army of minions, of course, you need some custom designer footwear. I told Ryzen that that would probably be in the range of 500 gold. Ryzen wants a special um, uh, a face on the shoes. Little silver so. faces with mouths agape and little teeth all over the shoes. If that can fit in with whatever is appropriate for this um, odd town. And I mentioned that, of course, that silver work will 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 have to price that out. But uh, but yeah. So y you can uh make all your description to to Pebble here, who will write down your custom order. And Proton, where'd Proton go? Back in the kitchen. Probably I go get Proton. Yeah. <gasps> Before she can come in, I just kind of like body block her and take it. Like you made the beer cold. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. That oh, was really good. <laughs> nice. Wasn't it? I, I How do you tiny feel? Old lady, but I am shaking the shit out of her. She is a tiny <laughs> old lady. I mean, she lets you put hands on her and shake her, um, and she smiles the whole time. And when when there's a room in the conversation, she says, "And um, tell me, darling, how how do you feel?" <laughs> like I had a bunch of cold beer. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> excellent, excellent. That's the idea. Um, Can I whisper, meanwhile, to Leslie that I think we should stop talking about Proton by her regular name? Okay. I mean, Tony. Tony, our sister Tony. Yeah, that's better. Hmm. Mm, yes, yes. The uh, The sorceress will come on in and look around and go... Where's the one who's going to carve the lasts? Oh, it's me. I, I take the custom orders and then I do the last. <laughs> I, like, run over to do the last. Mm -hmm. Your hands are sore from carving all day, but here's another customer. And she'll look at you and she'll say, Do you also dabble in magic? Actually, yes. I just recently, you know, discovered that I could do more things than I thought. <laughs> You see, I've been practicing, and then I take out my dragon staff that looked like a duck staff. Mm -hmm. All of my, like, my chi and focus, and like, I've been doing martial arts and little meditations every day. And one day, believe it or not, it just happened. Like, I had some additional powers that I didn't know I had in me, and then I was able to do that. And then it keeps going. It's always too thorough. 
Mm -hmm. Well, she's nodding along and listening. And for the first time, you feel like you have a captive audience here. You feel like like what Lazuli must feel like every time she opens her mouth. This person's interested in what you have to say. Oh, I'm going ham then. Like, she's going to get the description of every spell I can do with, like, a full explanation of how I feel and how I can make it happen through channeling my inner chi energy. It's very fascinating. She listens and will ask some pointed questions, especially the comments on how it makes you feel as you channel these things. Um, give me... Give me a perception check as well, uh, Pebble. <laughs> Yeah, now she just has my full spell list. All good, you know, that was totally a good idea. Um, but Pebble's too excited about it. Um, so what do we want? A perception check? Yeah. Mm. Six. Don't worry about it. All good. It's great. All good. She loves it. She She's loves so the story. Interested. <gasps> Maybe I've become a much more interesting person ever since I could do magic. And now, like, everybody's going to love me. And with me, that, we're going to go to our break, and we'll true. see everybody <laughs> on the other side. See you soon. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to City Dwarves. <clears throat> Where were we? Oh, yes. There's an old woman in your shop. You're telling her stories. So, rest of you. You're listening to this old sorceress. Listen to Pebble's stories with great interest and rapt attention, unlike you've ever seen before in your life. Um, and Pebble going on, 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 on. And it's late. The sun's down by now. And the last haven't even been started. What are the two I'll of you? I'll break in and encourage them to... Uh, Pebble, don't forget, the the last needs carving. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll try to keep explaining uh, and, and doing the last at the same time. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. The last can't come last. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this lady. Risen, is that it? Risen. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Risen. It's a beautiful name. Yes, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. With the little patterns and the little teeth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I, I did the last. Yes. Well, it's important that you um. Important that the the little the little faces on the side flat with big open mouths. Okay, you can do that. Can I draw what she's talking about to make sure I get it? Yeah. Um, talking about something like... Draw a mouth. Um, this. Like wide open mouths. And for some reason, the teeth on the mouths are important. Details to her. Okay. So I like draw that on my paper with all the instructions and I'm like, would that type of design work for you? Yes, but each little face should be ever so slightly different as if they're unique individuals. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is a very cozy shop that you've got going on here. Like your little cool rocks. Thank you. It's a new advanced... Uh... Technology developed by my sister Lazuli. Could I interest you in a beer? It's cold. I can have one. I'll of my take boys. a beer. It's only three silver a beer. I want. I'll take a beer. Hello. Yes. 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 And um, she gets up from where you're carving, heads over to the front door, opens it, and says to someone standing outside um, to bring over a, a small keg of beer. And then she'll come back in and uh, unfurl her hand in front of you, Voldar, and say, Be silver, please. We're all I... women of business here, are we not? Yeah, Nothing's yeah. Free. I put three silver in her hand, but I walk past her and open her front door and look for somebody standing outside. Uh, you can see there's a pair of like half orcs headed over towards the bar. Have they been out there the whole time? My boys 
keep me company. They stay quite close. Is that are they are they barefoot? Or is their feet dirty? What is that? Is that boots? They're barefoot. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, and Baldar closes the door and says, I'm just saying. <laughs> And what then I walk, and I, and I go by Lazuli, barefoot. I'm not saying any. I'm just saying. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I've seen, I've up. seen Lazuli like shame people into buying nice shoes before. This is the Bulldara attempt. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, it's, 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 they had no shoes. Well, um, they'll come back with a small keg and they'll pour you out a mug um, and you, you can begin to drink and she'll also look to Pebble. Would you like any cold, fresh beer? Uh, is that a good idea? I don't drink a lot and I'm supposed to do the last and that's what you already told me that it's a bad idea oh. that I do multiple things at the same time. And let you me tell like you the you story about the time. Day. I did... Well, I suppose I look you're to too Leslie. young to, to drink, then. Must be <sighs> for someone more mature. Yeah. Can I roll a perception check or insight check or something to try to figure out what this sorcerer... Like, does the sorcerer just like Pebble, or are they, like, trying to get something from Pebble? Like, why they're... Are great questions, yeah. Are you just being jealous? Because, like, <laughs> for once before... <laughs> Paying attention to Pebble. <laughs> Maybe. You think you feel like something's off in this conversation. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to ask, like, is there anything I know of sorcerers that would make me think, like, these questions are leading to something? Which questions that are you referring to? Because she's asked, a, she's talked a lot. Well, the, the, like, encouraging her to keep talking about the same thing over and over, or the, like, oh, you've had such a hard day, the, like, over-flattering mm. stuff. Give me an insight check versus her deception or persuasion. Isn't it also a flat 10 on the start? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Um, you know... You can't pin it down, but there is most definitely something off about this woman in this interaction. Um, but I can't give you any hints based off of that role. I'm going to just start trying to monitor the conversation. Like, if Pebble starts talking and isn't carving, like, Pebble, remember, let's not keep our customer waiting. You know, and just kind of, like, try to speed the whole process along so that the sorcerer can leave. I'm like sweating and trying really hard. Uh, and then I look to when she's talking about the beer and I'm like, do you think I could like keep going and grab a beer or is that like bad etiquette? Mm, you look at me and ask that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about I'll grab one for you that will keep cold until you're done. Oh, that's a wise decision. Yeah, that's why oh, you're front of store. Holds out her hand, three silver. I plunk down six silver and get two more beers. I'll put over here, Peb. And I'm going to keep drinking. Well, I last... asked Baldara, you sure you want to drink more? Sure, I'm sure this stuff's good, sis. Have one. All right. <laughs> I have one. We're, we're dead. We die. This is... <laughs> Um, beers later and the last done um, the old woman will eventually leave business is concluded she's got you've got the, the shape of everything needed she says that she will of course buy something from you but she has to get her money from the shop first and she's here for a few days so, um, what sort of down payment are you looking for you said it was 500 plus extra for custom work. I mm -hmm. want to elbow Lazuli and be like, sis, you should get a recipe for the, the beer instead. That's, <laughs> I've never had stuff that good. And I've had a lot of stuff. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I forgot that the beer that she makes was like different. That's funny. Should we um, go with like a hundred gold? Is that the sure good deposit? Sounds good to me. She goes to the door, talks to someone outside, and comes back in and uh, sort of taps her hands on the counter while she's waiting for someone to bring her the money. Out across the party. Was there um, another one of you around? I feel like I heard you speaking about a fourth sister earlier. Uh, she, I think, is exhausted after today. Hmm. Okay. To wait. Are you still carving the last? Well, the last is done, right? We're waiting last for the money. Done. Yeah, you're just waiting for the money, and he's she's sitting on the. Mm. Uh, what, are, what are you waiting for? Right now. The money, oh, right? Just waiting for my boys to bring me the money for the down payment. Ah. I didn't carry my wealth mm. out here. So, right. like, while we wait, why don't you tell me a story? Because you seem to be like such an interesting person and you're doing all this magic hmm what story what sort of story would you like to hear a uh, fable? about a, a true story a cry, yeah a true story a love Some... story what would you like to hear Something that involves your magic and it has a surprising ending that we wouldn't see coming. <laughs> oh, dearie me. That story you'll have to wait for. I can tell you any other story but that one. I picked the right one, didn't I? Oh, We're yeah. so connected. <laughs> yeah, like snort. We are. Like... <laughs> Ooh. Uh, well, maybe. What about your favorite story? Everybody has a favorite story, right? Oh, I do. Mine's See, about the dragon stick. I was visiting a far away land, way down south. Island surrounded by mountains with a gentle river coming through it. A land of halflings and happiness and tranquility over which Eris uh, provides. Over which Eris watches. <clears throat> and um, I noticed something about the soils there. Uh, the way that the plants were growing, the, the redness to the clay, and uh, spent some time with the wee folk, and <clears throat> discovered something in the plants there. There was something pacifying about the nutrients in the ground that made it such a, a sweet and gentle place. There was this bushy little shrub. Its leaves, when powdered, when, when baked, but not too hot, and crumbled with the appropriate exciting spells, but it do say state of stupor those who consumed it. Now our, our dear halfling friends down there were well aware of these properties. They, they turned it into their own sorts of brew that they would drink frequently. But with the addition of magic, could take that aimless stupor, give it somewhat of a direction. There was a problem. A problem that was well, a little difficult to overcome. You see, there needed, there needed to be a way to forge a link between the spellcaster and the consumer. A link had to be voluntary. It had to be 
clear. And it ha it, it grew stronger with repetition. Forging links is not so simple. It's not just a, a, a one and done. It, it, like many things, over time, over repetition, it got stronger and stronger. Like anyway. friendship. By yes. the way, I stopped drinking my beer like two sips in as all of this <laughs> has happened. And I'm like completely like not seeing anything bad that could be about this. So I'm like, like friendship. Like friendship. voluntary connection that builds over time into a stronger one mm. through repetition. With which you need <sighs> symbols, right? Symbols of friendship, exchanged yeah. gifts uh -huh. and tokens. Symbols of friendship. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I took these halfling drinks, forged these spells, and found... There's another island north. Just off the coast, a little ways. A small one. It probably won't chart on any of your maps. This island is a big titan. Lives there, buried under rock, pacing, always trying to. Perfect subject. That's the story of how I made friends with Titan. A great and powerful creature, formerly trapped under stone. Now, my dutiful, lovely friend who's always, well, a little far away, but not too far. How Would you like far? to be my friend, Pebble? That is an awesome story. You made friends with Titans, like, oh, that's why you're so cool. Of course, I'll be your friend. Excellent. Yes, I'm not going to yes, take my yes. eyes off Pebble, but I'm going to say, Bildara, maybe you should go check on those, uh, those couriers who were, who were bringing back the money. No, mm, get, get. Uh, Bob Boldar's gonna go to the front door. You go out, they're coming. They're almost here. Yeah, yeah, they're almost here, sis. They come on in. They hand you some bags of money. They set them, you can set them down on the counter, count them out. The old woman smiles and leaves. As soon as she's gone, I'm like, Pebble. Friend. There's I'm something I'm really, really like, weird about that stepping person. Stepping up in the world. Like, you cannot believe, like, how many friends I have now. Like, we have Proton, and now we have Ryzen. It's like... It's Can I take the remainder of my beer and, like, study it? Sure. What does that look like? <laughs> I'm going to first, like, just take close look at, like, normal beverage things consistency smell all that kind of stuff and then i'm also going to use what i know of magic to just like arcana check everything i know about like how she prepared this and what she was saying about powders and stuff yeah well give me an arcana check well the beer is definitely modified um in some magical way but we know it's magically cold beer mm -hmm. Um, but you're not going to be able to get anything more detailed without like an identify spell, maybe a detect magic spell, but like probably an identify spell, um, or some like, you know, astronomically good spell caster who's really, really tapped into this stuff. Dang it. I forgot own. at the beginning of this episode, I took detect thoughts. Oh, <sighs> oh no. If only. Well. Would I be able to use, like, history or medicine, ideally, with my extensive history of drinking and alcohol to uh, pop awake from my drunken stupor and, like, reveal, like, it was very hoppy, a uh, strong hint of thistle. A strong hint of cold. <laughs> uh, yeah, give me a constitution saving throw and a, a medicine check. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. We're gonna be able to do that one. 
And constitution, I'm just hitting up here. Get in there. Blah. Oh my god, so good. What? Wow. Okay, so you can wow. clear your mind. <clears throat> you can focus. And you can detail the the flavors here, which are unusual. Um, first thing that you recognize is that you've been to the mules. The, Rams the, the Rams Ram's Ass. Rams Spiral. You've been to the Ram Spiral many times before. Um, but this is a brand new beer that they've never had there. Like coldness aside, these are new flavors. There are new ingredients. This is a new recipe. Got it. No like elderberry essence, no uh uh no it's oak barrel. It's running up against my equal lack of knowledge about beer as shoes. Uh um, ah, that's okay. Whatever would be relevant to anything Lazo is trying to figure out. If it's yeah, nothing. yeah, it's got rye in it, which is unusual. A little whiskey barrel aging. Something you age beer? I don't think so. Never mind. I don't know either. I mean, you ferment it. Hey, so you aging. must age it to some degree. Oh. Anyway, I pop awake, reveal to you what everything sounds eloquent to me in my drunken state, and then just promptly kind of head back down uh, between the two big money bags. Mm-hmm. I I just want to say that when Leslie tries and ask question i'm completely like ignoring her fully in my head and i'm like doing the little happy like friendship dance and like i didn't do it on the paper where i drew her picture that she wants on her thing but i'm like writing the wizard's name and adding little like hearts and like friendship symbols oh. <laughs> around it and i'm like oh my god and the cats the cats are my friends too like they're really I, great friends, the cats. Like, way better, way better than the sorcerer, who is also doing really weird stuff, trying to, you know, build an army of minions. You heard them say that, right? Was it minions, or was it more like it was definitely people minions. that just want to follow her? And that no, definitely are like, exactly hey. said raise an army of minions to build a tower. Did she say army? Mm -hmm. She didn't mean, like, just, like, followers. No. She definitely said minions. Just, you know. I How think... do we know minions a bad thing? Do you want to be her minion? I don't know. Can somebody define minion? Look, I'm not going to stop you from doing whatever you want with your life, but I think you really have much more to offer than being a minion to a sorcerer. And I think but that's she... rude of her to actually, like, even think that you might be. Honestly, like, I think you're worth way more than a friend like that. Well, she didn't ask me to be a minion. She asked me to be a friend. Mm. Well, That's good. like top tier. Top tier relationship right there. Maybe. Hmm. Well, well you know, I'll, I'll listen to your concern. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a list of pros and cons of each friend I have, and I'm going to rank them. And then, you know, we'll see if she or the cats or Proton takes a tough spot. It's going to be a close race. If that's what you feel like the right way to handle this is, then good for you. <laughs> I think so. There comes a, a gentle knocking on the door. Another friend. You go open the door. Hello. Uh... It's a woman you don't recognize. And she's kind of drunk. <laughs> hey there. You finished my clutch yet? Uh, no. Sorry. Was this okay. the person who put the rush order? I, yeah. I'm here with the rest of my down payment. Who do I give it to? Oh, Pebble will take your payment. And uh, let's, let's get you an estimate. I go ask Proton how long they think this purse is going to take a week. Okay. I tell them that's the ETA. All right. Now, um, if this we can sort of it. down payment doesn't work for you, I can like exchange it somewhere else, but I figured like, why well, go through the middle man? They're just going to take a percentage. So, uh, here you go. And they like unfurl a piece of cloth and like out spills some like, spoons and forks and knives made out of silver just onto your your table Ta-da! silver that should be enough to cover whatever 
Is it the balance? It was 20 G up front and 15 G in silver cutlery, I he guess. owes you 15 silver, uh, 15 gold at this yeah. point. And now this is, you know, silverware. It's made of is silver. Is there food? You melt it down. On that no. cutlery? No. There's is there no food, food on, on it? Is it clean? Like, it is clean cutlery, yes. And is it engraved at all? Uh, yeah, actually, now that you mention it, you pick one up and you turn it over. And there's a symbol on the back of it. Will everyone here make me history checks except for Boldara, who can make me a history check at advantage? Dang. Ooh. Head. Ah, 15 is what I was looking for. So, Boldara, you look at this and you're like, this kind of looks familiar. And I think maybe the, the countenance on your face but draws in your two other sisters to take a look at this. And on the back of it, is a, a carved PS, which you all recognize. Well, you, Boldara should recognize, but maybe she's drunk. Um, it stands for Polk Smithing. And hmm. Polk Smith is a, a, a renowned local blacksmith who happens to have a certain daughter. <gasps> Which certain daughter? That certain daughter. Yeah, that's what? why you that's why you recognize it. Why, it. why you got Bethany's forks? What? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. These are mine. I just got went home and I brought them here. Um, Where? You live with Bethany? Holy shit. Who's Bethany? I'm, is this enough to cover my debts? I think so. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't take payment in flatware, but we, well, like, then no the worries. Right we can wait for you to bring back the coinage at another time. And I, I pack it back it. up and shove it in their arms. Okay, I'll bring back the coins tomorrow. I'll sell this off. Bye-bye. And she Bye. skips out. Wait, 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 I want to grab it off her as she yeah, goes. Well, she stops as you, you clearly are, are distraught. You're going to go sell? You went home? to get your forks at the house that you live with Bethany because these are Bethany's forks and that and you're gonna you, you're gonna need you're gonna go sell them what are you gonna eat for breakfast tomorrow with I have more I don't think these are your forks lady I think you need to get the fuck out of here okay bye bye she just leaves yep without the forks no no with the forks no, no, I took the forks. Oh, oh, oh. I got oh, the bag of forks over. I see. Uh, well, that then would be she'll... my space work. <laughs> she gives you a furrow and goes, um, hand me my stuff. Now, that why don't... Is it Boldara... your stuff? Boldara, clearly you want those forks. I don't want the forks, Peb. I don't know, but I don't... Uh, so they touch Bethany's lips a couple times. Like, whatever. I did. I think the, you want the forks. I think, I think we should Bethany's just accept... Forks. I think Bethany well, should have the forks. That I I'll think these forks you. are stolen. That. Well, Lazuli said it was stolen. Accusation, drunk lady. <laughs> Accusation. <laughs> J'accuse. Uh, <laughs> me... Found them on the ground, okay? No, That's how they came did. into my no, possession forks on the ground. Well, maybe well, Dara, someone... why don't you walk with our new friend to Bethany's house to check if the forks have been stolen? And if not, then all's well. Okay. I hook my arm through her arm and I hold the forks as far away as I can from her on the other side and we start marching. He looks at you as you get, you know, three houses down, her voice drops, and she's still, you know, she's still a little tipsy. So are you. And she goes, you know this Bethany, you know this Bethany. What's the deal? I know she likes to eat food, and I know she uses silverware to do it, and I know she's going to be real sad tomorrow if she can't crack her soft-boiled egg with a tiny little spoon and scoop it out and eat it, and then go, oh, food. like that's enough food for a human. <laughs> Well, you seem pretty attached. Is there something in the air? Well, you who are drunk and need to mind your business. And if these are not one your forks, of those are true. 
you should stop coming with me because uh, Bethany's dad has got some real arms and he's going to be very mad if you took his forks. What if I told you I could get you Bethany's pillow? Would you let that me That is an invasion. Lady, you could just shut up on the rest and you'd be creepy. I mean, I might smell what like is, her. What is the drunk lady's end game here? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of just going to drag her, I think. Yeah. Well, right now she's trying to find fun ways out of this. Um, well, it would smell like her. How tiny is this lady? Can I carry her like a scruffed animal? She's a human, so she's okay. like, you know, 140 pounds, but you're pretty strong. You could lift her, but she's probably taller than you. I'm not trying to walk up to Bethany's father's house carrying another woman who is clearly inebriated. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, listen, lady, why don't you head on home? I'll return the forks. And if you ever go near their house again... Don't. Don't do it. What about one of her handkerchiefs? Uses that to have her face? No? <laughs> like like, a, like the thing she blows her nose in? What are you, disgusting? What do you want? I want her to love me again. Oh. <laughs> and I cry oh. into the bag of silverware. Oh, no. She like wraps her arms around you. I'm so sorry. I thought this was a fun thing. I didn't realize you were heartbroken. I thought you were just a creepy old dwarf. Eighty-nine. I don't know how old I am. You. I mean, I don't know who this Bethany girl is, but I could. See what she's up to for you. See maybe see what she likes, what she's into, who she's seeing. Get some information about who she's dating that maybe you could use for your own purposes. What do you want out of this lady? A, a, a custom wine sling? Why are you doing yeah. this? Yeah, I, just, I need a, a clutch for my wine bottles. Why are you into this, huh? I've never seen someone so ardently trying to return stolen merchandise before. Stolen silverware. Oh, it's called justice. I'm just getting around to inventing it. Uh, a new but... thing for me. That's... <laughs> Apparently, uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring these forks back, lady. But if you really have something from Bethany for me, uh, you're always welcome to come by. But I, I can smell your bullshit a mile away, especially if you're trying to sell it as Bethany's beautiful scent. Well, here, take the forks then. It's fine. I'll go make some more money somewhere else. I have no always had the forks. I am taking <laughs> the forks and I am taking them to Bethany's father. Okay. Well. She lets you go and um, leaves. Bethany's father is home asleep, unknowing that his stuff has been pilfered. Bethany doesn't live here anymore, by the way. She I am silently now. placing each one back in the silver and I'm... <sighs> yep, and the then I'm using the unlocked. key that I still have to lock it. Well, that'll wrap up our story for today. <laughs> there are a few threads that are unfurled still, but we might get to them in a session or two sessions or three sessions or never. We'll see. Um, but that will be it for today's episode of City Dwarves. Thank you all I for check playing. My pockets. I, I love that we can turn anything into a sales event. <laughs> <laughs> and a successful one like that was mm -hmm. the mind game at the end as they were leaving you're like great job everybody and they're like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah we did we had a great time yeah mm -hmm. they, 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 they. okay thanks neil that was Thank my voice thanks uh, so much that's it good night we'll catch you next time check the calendars and our schedules and our dms and our discords for all the details and blah 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 blah, blah. have fun good night everybody